Hey guys, Argon Templar here with another character profile. Catalan Stark. Uh, there are some characters in this show, like Marjorie Tyrell. Well, I guess show slash books, because I've, I've read both and I read the books first. So the books kind of have a bit of a dominant view to some extent for some characters. She's a character I find very enigmatic and kind of difficult to classify and to kind of figure out. Um, as I think I said in my, my Sansa video, um, I find Catelyn to be a very cold person, very cold and kind of calculating. Like, she gets, she gets angry, and she lets her emotions take the better of her, but at the same time, I just find her a lot more of a thinker than her husband. Um, I find Ned to be, frankly, the guy who acts on his heart more, who's more idealistic. Cat seems a lot more cynical, a lot more well trained and well prepared to play the Game of Thrones. Um, she seems to understand politics a lot better. She seems to understand um, the world better, and she's kind of the pragmatism to Ned's idealism. It, it's kind of interesting because, as uh, in a sense, um, as I've said, I think Arya is more like Cat than like her father and Kat got along better with Sansa and Arya got along better with Ned um is it because they're they're complementary personalities perhaps and like Arya and Kat were kind of the uh the sharpness and the um the cynicism to Ned's idealism and kind of the, the pragmatism of what needed to be done uh, I'm not sure. Maybe that was... I, I always kind of wonder what the relationship between Cat and Sansa was like. Because we, we don't really see that much of it. And I just find them very, very different in terms of temperament and personality. Um, I find them that they almost have opposite personalities. Particularly in the TV show, I find uh, Caitlin Stark has a very... Um, kind of dark personality, and a lot of that's just based on what happens. But if you notice, Ned doesn't want to go south. He doesn't want to play the Game of Thrones. He just wants to stay in the north. But Kat basically bullies him into it. And she's like, you gotta go south. You gotta go play the game. You gotta go marry Sansa to Joffrey. Uh, you gotta go help out our uh, my sister and, and stuff like that. And Ned's like, no, I don't really want to go. This whole thing smells like a trap. But she's like, no, you gotta do it, Ned. You gotta do it. And then it, it, it kind of seems like whenever Ned kind of like wants to get out, she keeps pulling him back into it. And that she's a lot more um, kind of invested in politics. It may just be that she's from the South and uh, the politics still holds some appeal to her when it doesn't hold any appeal to Ned. Um, so in a sense, Ned's idealism and Ned's romanticism of just wanting to stay in the North is um is actually more practical than his wife's desire to play the game um but it's catelyn's interesting because she is a traditional feminine woman in a lot of ways but she's also very um she's you know what she is she's an alpha female i think is a good way to describe catelyn stark which is a very strange and unusual thing. Um, they do exist, and they're always they always kind of puzzle me when I see them, because they act in a very strong, assertive way, but they don't come off as as shrill or like feminists. And they can be extremely strong and, and dominant, but in, in a very feminine way. And it's very odd, because it runs counter to... They don't... They, they're, they're leaders, but not in a way that feels like they're doing a, a, a B-grade job of imitating a male. Because I find with a lot of women who aspire to be like that, they aren't leaders. So they try to imitate what they think a man would do, but they can't do it. So it comes off in a really bad way. And I've had a, a lot of female managers I've had are like that. But occasionally you will have one who can lead in a very, um, 
in, in a very decisive, strong manner, and they can also be feminine, and it doesn't. There's not a a contradiction there. The, the two things don't run against each other. Uh, Sarah Palin was to some degree like that. I don't have the highest opinion of her, but she was a feminine woman who also was kind of an, had an alpha personality. Uh, Margaret Thatcher is probably the best known example of that. Uh, I remember when she got elected, well, I wasn't alive when she got elected, but when she got elected, she said she didn't owe feminists anything because she had gotten in there on her, by her own will and her own talents. So Margaret Thatcher was a feminine woman. I would not call her masculine, really, but she was a decisive leader who could effectively be one. So I think that's important to understand in Kat, um, particularly given that Ned is not an alpha male. I think that's a very important thing to keep in mind about Ned Stark. He's not an alpha male. He is not really a manly man. Well, he is to some extent, but he was never raised to be the ruler, to be the lord, to make the hard decisions. He was the second son. Uh, he was raised to be his brother's right-hand man, to be a good general, to be a good leader, to be a good administrator, to be honorable and likable and diplomatic. But he wasn't raised to be harsh to make the hard decisions and to be the alpha male. So to some extent I find Cat dominates Ned, but unlike um, Cersei and Jamie's relationship, it, it, it works. It works uh, pretty well. Because Ned is, I'm not saying Ned's not male, I'm just saying he's not really what I would define as an alpha male. He's very easy to push around, he's very reluctant to resort to violence, to force, to um, to do whatever it takes to defend his family. He doesn't have that uh, a tendency to snarl and put his back up when threatened. He's more of a let's compromise, let's make a deal, that kind of thing. Catmore has that put your back up, do whatever it takes type of thing, which leads her to kidnap Tyrion. Because she, she's just going to do what it takes, because she's decisive, because she's an alpha female. And Ned is is kind of a beta male. And I don't mean that in a negative way, because most males are not alpha males, and not everyone can be an alpha male. And there's nothing wrong with not being one. I'm not saying that Ned's like a wussy or effeminate in any way. Ned is, is very much a man's man. He's just not... He's not like Tywin Lannister. Tywin Lannister is pretty much as alpha as you can possibly be. Whereas Ned is, is, is a lot less so. Um, and Cat is alpha, but it, it, it works. Whereas Cersei thinks she's alpha when she's really not. And it, it, it's, it leads her to act like a psycho. I think that's a good contrast, actually. Cat is an actual alpha female. Cersei is not an alpha female, but she thinks she's an alpha female. So she tries to imitate her father. Like, she calls herself Tywin Lannister with teats. But she's absolutely fucking horrendous at it. She has no idea what she's doing, whereas Cat largely does know what she's doing. However, Cat's problem is uh, she's kind of a half measures person. Um, it's it's partially just the world she lives in, and I, I'm not I'm not like gonna go. Oh, it's 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 the patriarchy, but um, it, it, it in this case it's because in part men tend to lead because. I find alpha males are like 10 to 100 times more common than alpha females. Um, so, despite her being one of the few female characters in the show, and probably like just in general that can lead and can do a good job running things, uh, she doesn't really have that option because that's not the way society's functioned. So, well, Rob probably would have done better if he had have given her more, more say in things and let her do more stuff. That's just not the world they live in. And I'm not really criticizing that because um, if, if you're going to change the whole system, that would also be giving people like Daenerys and Cersei power, and they need to be kept away from power at all costs because they're completely unfit to rule. So, I don't know. So, Kat, I, I find her relationship with her kids interesting. I find her, she's, she kind of seems cold and distant from them, actually, compared to the father. She doesn't seem to spend as much time with them. She doesn't seem to really nurture them 
in the way their father is. Because you always seem to see the kids in, in the little bit you have of their pre-crisis lives. Uh, you tend to see Ned around them and Ned doing stuff with them. but And she's off in the background kind of watching and, and making sure everything runs. Uh, I kind of wonder um, if Tywin and his wife's relationship was a bit like that. But overall, Cat's kind of an interesting figure. And like I said, um, despite what I've, I've said in the analysis I've done, I find her a hard woman to characterize. I find her a hard character to really pin down and really describe. Something I find interesting about her is she's probably the most religious character on the show. She's always praying to the Seven. She's always performing devotions to the Seven. Her faith seems to be a very uh, important part of her, of her personality, of her worldview, of um, how she, she deals with things. And, and I always found that kind of interesting, especially in contrast to what I find is an otherwise rather cynical person. But, um, one of her problems, I think the downfall of Kat is, is largely, like I said, that she's the alpha in the family and not her husband. Because while most of her decisions are not necessarily bad, they were bad in the context of her son and husband not being capable enough. Like, when she kidnaps Tyrion, that was a bad move, but... If, 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 um, Ned had have taken advantage of it, if he had have, like, sided with Renly or done anything, like, if he had have played the game even a little, that whole situation probably could have been salvaged. But Ned is kind of utterly inept at the game, and he's not a strong leader. And the same thing I find kind of happened with her and her son. I found she tended to be a bit smarter than Rob, whereas Rob was too young to lead. Uh, is Rob an alpha male? Uh, I'm not sure. P kind of a bit more than his father, but not really enough. Uh, he also kind of was wishy-washy, overly idealistic, unwilling to compromise, that kind of thing. Um, and, and, like, they're unwilling to really accept the realities of ruling in a way that I think Kat was more willing to accept. So, really, she was, her downfall, and why a lot of people hate her, and why she looks negative, was she was an alpha female in a world that didn't really accept it, but more than that, she was an alpha female in a family that wasn't willing to listen to her. And I think if she had basically been running things, and Ned and, and Rob had basically just done what she said, things would have worked out better. Um, so that's kind of my thoughts on Catelyn Stark. If you want me to say anything else about her, I will. But that's, that's it for now. Signing out.